wants You're to ask a question in adenomyomectomy mm -hmm. or adenomyosis. She has nicely covered everything in this 20-25 uh, minutes lecture. It will party on you. Okay. So now let's move on to our first guest lecture by none other than Dr. Manish Pandya. Uh, sir, kindly share your screen. We are really waiting for your lecture to continue. Is my screen visible, madam? Hello? Hello? Sir is from Surendra Nagar, Gujarat and uh, dye endoscopic surgeon. And he will be taking our lecture. On, uh, so we have curated this lecture series like that. We should start with the basics first. So sir is going to be our opening batsman for this series. Sir, kindly continue. Yeah. Is my audio and video available? Same, madam. Yes, sir. We are clearly seeing your audio, video, and your uh, slide as well. Okay, thank you. Kindly go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. So kind of you. Thank you, ICOG, for giving me opportunity on this platform. Uh, these are my credentials, madam. Uh, I have got 112 paper published on Orchid, so I will see that anybody wants to see paper, they can scan this QR code. You have got two seat of DNV and two seat of fellowship in ICOG, reproductive medicine and laparoscopy. My first love is gynecological endoscopic surgery because this book was published in 2004 and I am happy that the three books written by us is recommended in RCOG as a reading material. Atlas of fetal echocardiography and technique of IVF made easy has gone for second edition. I am editor-in-chief of Indian Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecological Research and editor in Open SS Journal in Gynecology. Worked as a KOL in Digestone. And recently I got opportunity to interview Professor Herman Tourne in SRA Copenhagen. Uh, these all interviews and all educational videos are available on Money Sport 269 channel. So anybody wants to see, they can subscribe. Today my topic is on ergonomics and port dynamics in laparoscopic surgery. Believe me, this ergonomics and port dynamic surgery, or it is basically a battlefield. Anybody wants to go for any battle, any surgery, they have to plan from where they have to got entry. Just like uh, in Mahabharat or in uh, any battle, just like in Bahubali, they they are planning their battle. So this is just like your battle is your surgery and port is your planning position so always see for the position of the patient always see that where your primary troca because first entry is always close entry so for that you have to become very careful secondary port entry always to be under vision there are alternatives to get the port entry and always see for the exit technique never see that your technique should be uh, 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 never remove your port just like that always say that port should be properly exit just like entry point and just like exit point sorry slides are not moving sorry for this technical hinge So always see our laparoscopic surgery, we are all surgery we are doing in prone position. It is better to use stripper. We have got very good stripper thanks to our urological friend who had advised us to buy that stripper and with the stripper it is very easy to maneuver the patient from lithotomy to straight position uh, that they are not slippery and always put probe in a simple prone position. After entering in the probe, you have to go for tender level position. So operation table should be horizontal, not in tender bulk in the start of procedure. Abdomen should be palpated to check for any mass before insertion of Barry's needle. I used to promote this uh, intraambilical technique and I am happy to share that this technique was published in my book in 2004. Now it is worldwide accepted. We all know that umbilicus is a very fixed organ. If you elevate the umbilicus, there is all the structures are stick together. If you cut it, you can directly go into the abdomen. So there is fixed peritoneum, thin 
less vascular and always it is cosmetic. Always it is cosmetic. Now see that. Before entering into the abdomen, you have to palpate the abdomen. See for umbilicus. Always put your finger down to the umbilicus and you can see any adhesion is there or not. It is my custom that we used to give every port are locally anesthetized. That will serve two purpose. For easy entry and post-operative pain will be also less. And uh, this is our custom that in every port we are just giving local anesthesia. After see that umbilicus, God has given us very good langerhans line. Very good langerhans line. Just clean that umbilicus and you can see there is a very good langerhans line seen in between. You have to just put your alysis forceps open one. We are using single tooth alysis forceps. And this single tooth alysis forceps has, if you open it, you can see a very good line. And on that line, you have to put vertical incision. You have to put vertical incision according to this langerhans line and elevate this umbilicus by this vertical incision on both the sides. You can see it is very easy to elevate umbilicus. This is a single tooth alysis forcep. Extend that incision with help of stab knife. We are just extending the incision with the stab knife. As we all know that umbilicus is situated very centrally. All layers are stuck together, less vascular, and once we put this artery forceps just like open technique, we are seeing abdominal contact inside. And we are not using, we are not on using the pyramidal tip of trocar also. We are just entering with the sleeve of trocar. You can just see. We are entering with the sleeve of trocar. Okay, this is only sleeve of trocar. And you are in the abdomen. So this is very easy technique, open umbilical technique. You can see that now you are inside. And once your primary port is in, it is very easy to put any other port inside the abdomen. But I don't call that everybody should uh, do like this. Uh, there are different methods, but if this is one of the direct entry of umbilicus, lower edge of umbilicus. And second, what happens? If you do at the umbilical level, once stroke goes in, this, these two edges are everting up. So it will also uh, prevent the leakage of gases and looks very easy. Ideally, everybody should use Paris needle. This is the first entry, first battle point or you can say if you are playing the chess, it is just your soldier which is going inside the abdomen first. It is very thin needle, usually entry at 45 degree. You have to see that abdomen is relaxed and always when abdomen is relaxed, all the vessels are away from abdominal wall. If you put direct entry, elevate the umbilicus, uh, the distance between the aorta and umbilicus is very much decreased. So elevation is always good and that usually we are practicing as a all gynecological surgeon. Uh, first is first entry is 90 degree, then you have to do it at the level of pelvis. Uh, only first trocar injury is 0.84 and in every one in thousand women you may encounter any vascular injury. So always be careful. Always your force towards the sacral hollow in the midline. So primary incision for laparoscopy should be vertical from the base of the umbilicus. And care should be taken not to incise so deeply as entry into the abdominal cavity. There are different modifications of the point, insertion point. First is palmar point. Then you can go for um, middle umbilical point. Then there is supra pubic point, Douglas pouch point. These are all the different points where you can insert and you can insert the primary port. Uh, Palmer port is very safe but always you have to see for a spleen and it is better to put a nasogastric tube or rice tube uh, in the stomach before inserting this Palmer point otherwise it is very safe point unlikely for any uh, you know, so adhesion in multiple surgery cases also. Insertion of the various needle always use like a pencil grip vertical then towards the pelvis. Very needle should be sharp with good and tested action. Always see that there is a very good spring action is there. Uh, lower, lower abdominal wall should be stabilized in a such a way that very needle can be seen at the right angle. Elevate the abdentary abdominal wall at the time of varies or primary tocar intercession is not routinely recommended. But usually we all do because it is just avoiding the visceral injury and vessel injury. Then angle of varies needle insertion should be according to the BMI of the patient from 45 degree in non-obese to 90 degree in obese patients. 
there are two audible clicks usually you heard when you penetrate the umbilicus excessive lateral movement of the needle should be avoided once it is needle is there and if you did then there will be a tear like this so don't uh, uh, do uh, movement of the needle like this waving of needle just in, in and out it also should be avoided and always see that there should be two clicks and always do this saline test either withdrawal instill or withdrawal whenever you put the varis needle you see two click you aspirate nothing is coming then it is good something is coming either stool feces or blood avoid the process stop the procedure abandon the procedure and never remove that needle from that if blood is coming always put needle over there and just try to open the abdomen because you are in the vessel only it is better to do very gently all this procedure saline test is not 100% accurate so many time if obese patient is there and if you do saline test if you are not in abdomen you are in the uh, fat you can also have a uh, negative saline test so always see that whether it is there and always put in suffocator on this is known as varis intraperitoneal pressure start with 10 mm of hg and once you see that abdomen is just filling up you can have a dullness at the liver side you see abdomen is just lifting up then it's good sign that you are in the abdominal cavity and always uh, uh, appropriate co2 source should be there and should be very slow insertion or very really slow insufflation of abdomen should be there so insufflation start at uh, uh, 10 mm of mercury then 20 to 25 mm of mercury always start very low 1 liter per minute check gas entry with very low pressure after 0.5 liter you can increase the flow and insufflate cut off at 20 to 25 before first trocar entry after you enter the first trocar it is it is better that abdominal pressure is 25 mm of mercury and at that time you enter the first trocar then force will be very less if there is 15 mm 3 kg or 3 to 4 kg force is usually there when you are able to instill the first trocar so primary trocar entry 4 to 6 kg of force there so at that time 20 to 30 mm of mercury pressure is there then it is very good you cannot injure the anything after this trocar is inside you have to reduce pressure to 15 to 14 to 15 that is usually our custom that we used to take 12 14 to 15 depending upon the patient size to so 12 to 15 mm of hg is the trocar pressure once trocar is inside the uh, first trocar is inside the abdomen so primary trocar insertion this is the direct trocar entry uh, uh, surgeon is lifting the abdomen first it is at 90 degree then it is allowing at the 45 degree in the pelvis so once laparoscope is introduced it should be rotated 360 degree to see for any adhesion in the bowel uh, it is there or not so correct position is just like 45 degree never go directly because here the aorta is very much near all the vasculature is very much near so there is incorrect position so primary trocar different uh, trocars are available conventionally we are using metal trocar then there is a plastic trocar then there is a terminative trocar then there is a hessian trocar different variety of trocar are there once there is a force entry you can see different type of position like this uh, you have you are not seeing any intestinal viscera or uh, intestine so see that there is a force entry <coughs> usually primary trocar is 10 to 12 mm usually we are putting in umbilicus or supra umbilical depend upon the size of uterus if uterus is th- 24 week size we can't put trocar at the level of umbilicus even though i am promoting umbilical technique you have to fit supra umbilical trocar and here you are you are watch- you are having the two clicks two sheets are to be broken and always see that should be trigonometry this is a trigon this is a trigon that every time you have to follow this trigon this trigon should be there so uh, triangular is better if you are putting this two trocar here and primary trocar here And if you are inserting there should be trigon like this if suppose second trocar is here it should be trigon like this so everywhere you have to make a triangular shape for easy entry and easy insertion always put this trocar under direct vision and always look for this epigastric vessels because so many time inadvertently you injure that vessel so always put your secondary trocar away from that epigastric vessel there are other injuries you can have a retroperitoneal hemorrhage you can injure the bladder vascular injury in fat bowel you can able to injure but if you are putting trocar under direct vision always see this light illuminization test always see for this usually we are doing light illuminization test then we are putting one needle with local anesthesia and then we are putting our secondary trocar there are different position by which you can put your secondary trocar but always see there is a formation of triangle like this 
like this, like this. You can see everywhere you have to maintain this trigonometry. So this trigonometry gives very good sight for your suturing. Always see for this obliterate and umbilical artery, uracus, bladder. You see that is uh, obliterate and umbilical artery, inferior epigastric vessel. Usually with 30 degree scope, if you put your probe above, uh, above of first, uh, your uh, light source should be down. So you can see that inferior epigastric vessel very well. And you have to insert this toka under direct vision. Always see that. Always see whenever abdomen is like this, always see uh, 360 degree. Always put the needle like this. You can see needle is there. This needle is there. So here we can see there is no vessel is seen. And with that needle side we are putting our secondary trocar. And with this we are also inserting the, the local anesthesia. So this trocar entry will be always under direct vision. So secondary port always should be put under direct vision. At that time pneumo should be put 20 to 25. Inferior epigastric vessel should be visualized prior to secondary port. And once the trocar has pierced the peritoneum, it should be angled towards the anterior pelvis. First laparoscopy picture above shows that left inferior epigastric vessel and site selected for insertion. So this are, if you put trocar directly like this, it will injure. So first entry, then you have to move your trocars towards the pelvis. So first there is vertical entry. This is the alternative uh, method that we are talking about this Palmer point. We can use this alternative method for pro uh, trocar placement. Uh, but before Palmer's point, that is left upper quadrant point. Uh, in the patient when there is a uh, suspicion of periumbilical adhesions or umbilical hernia or uh, three failed insufflation atom at the umbilicus. Other site of insertion such as transverse uh, uh, uterus varus needle insufflation may be considered umbilical and uh, uh, the palmer point insertion have failed, but this is a very rare options you can have to take. Open technique is Hessian technique, that is a open site insertion. You just you have to open the anti abdominal wall or the umbilical wall and you have to insert your direct insertion of troca. Uh, here also you can insert direct technique. This is a preventable tip injury. So once it is there, once it, once it is there. The tip entry is there, then you can, uh, there is a retractable tip, so it doesn't enter. We can call it the safety trocar also. So, safety trocar insertion has got a tip at the air. Once it is goes in, then blunt part will be there. So, it is a very less chances of injury to the patient. Thank you, sir. Sorry. So it is a very easy cannula trocar once we, uh, this is a safety trocar, insertion is very easy. Uh, this is Versa trap that is also a very good uh, different variety of trocars, it is available and it is also safe. These all are different variety of primary trocars, some reusable, some disposables are there. Then comes to the exit technique. Always exit under direct vision because sometimes you can see bleeding coming from this trocar point. Uh, there is injury to the momentum, sometimes momentum can be pulled out, injury to the vessels are there. So always remove your trocar under direct vision. After inspecting the abdomen, you can see that everything is fine, bleeding is not there, then remove the trocar under direct vision. And it is our custom that we instill some local anesthetics into the abdomen. This is, you can see, we will instill some bupivocaine over there and then we remove all the trocar under direct vision. So always remove trocar under direct vision. It is very easy and it is best technique. Uh, here you can see, we can see instead this uh, agent. This is an anesthetic agent and also primary trocar should be removed under vision. So we can see that primary trocar is also removed under vision. You can see here primary trocar is also removed under vision. So always remove trocar, secondary trocar also under vision. Uh, there is very good terminatic trocars are there. It is a very, uh, tip is very sharp. So it is a rotatory technique. So once you uh, go inside the abdomen, then you rotate it, rotate it, rotate it uh, until you reach the abdomen. So it is just a terminatic trocar cannulation. Uh, it is a direct visual entry. You can recognize that your entry is going inside. Uh, you can have a very good safety, you can even uh, record all the things and layer by layer you are cutting. So after uh, putting incision into the skin, then you are opening this uh, 
uh, subcutaneous fat, then you are also opening the sheath because there is a sharp cut. So it is uh, very, and there is no force. You have to just rotate the terminal tip uh, trocar and this, uh, the tip, the side tip. You can see there is a, there is a sharp edge. It will cut this, uh, this is a sharp edge. It will cut the portion and uh, by layer by layer it is going inside. Same technique you have to use for removal of the laparoscope, check all direct visualization. Uh, there we can see that there is no bowel injury and secondary port also must be removed under direct vision. Then comes about the wound closure, proper closure of fascia with umbilical port, uh, it is to prevent the wound adhesions and hernia. Avoid hernia by risking the closing sheath. Midline port should be closed more, more than 7 mm. Yeah, we used to take this uh, razor needle. It is needle coming like this. If it is more than 7 mm to 10 mm port, we are always uh, doing intra-abdominal suturing with this razor needle. So all this should, this is open umbilical technique. You can see that after closing it, we are going inside. Then we have to suture it very carefully. We have to suture with this. There is a typical needle. This is a port closer needle which is coming, which is very tough. So you can take umbilical technique and these all are the results of umbilical technique. Cosmetically, it looks very good. So men need his difficulty because they are necessary to enjoy the success. And I'm happy that uh, so many company of digestion using uh, our paper as a uh, reference. So it is the time change. to be happy. The time to be happy is now. And the place to be happy is here. And the way to be happy is to make someone happy and have a little heaven right here. So thank you much, everyone. The time thank you to very be much, happy everyone. Is now. And the place to be happy is here. And the way to be happy is to make someone happy and have a little heaven right here. Thank you very much. Thank you ICOG for giving me opportunity to share my views. Thank you very much. And just I'm stop sharing my screen. That was indeed a wonderful presentation, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank uh, you so kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thank, and dear friends, this is very, very important to understand, you know, uh, all the life threatening complications in laparoscopy are usually while doing the entry. Yeah. And that too by putting a viris or putting a 10 mm trocar. And 5 mm trocar entry definitely gets a very legal uh, attention. So you have to be very careful. And all the points which Sir has told is very, very important and you to need to mention it. And you simply cannot afford, even if you get to be a very senior endoscopic surgeon, you can never be confident in putting the primary trocar or the viris. So every time you have to follow all the three, four, five points while putting the viris and primary trocar. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks thank a lot. You, thank you. Yeah. So our next lecture is by Dr. Manju Shri Bu on laparoscopic instruments. Uh, welcome, madam. Thank you.